Welcome back. Developing now new reaction and finger pointing from both Democrats and Republicans into where the fiscal cliff negotiations might go after House Speaker John Boehner's epic fail to pass his plan B. Earlier, the Speaker tried to explain why a revolt within his own party stopped him from getting the votes needed to go through with the vote, the plan. Listen, there was a, a perception uh, created that, uh, that that vote last night was going to increase taxes. And we had a number of our members uh, who just really didn't want uh, to be perceived as having raised taxes. That was the real issue. Now, our first read team calls what happened a, quote, unmitigated disaster, an embarrassing blunder, and a loss of leadership and leverage. Just hours after confidently saying the measure would pass, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor broke the stunning news. No vote tonight? No. Will there be a vote tomorrow? No. Nope. Are you ditching Plan B? Will there be a vote today? No. And a major factor which may affect whether a deal will be made, the markets. The Dow opened down and has remained in negative territory all day as investors react to the uncertainty of the fiscal cliff negotiations. Let me bring in Michigan Congressman Sandy Levin, ranking member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Good to see you again, Congressman. Nice to be with you. Uh, so where do we go from here? I think Speaker Boehner has to decide whether he's a leader of a dysfunctional caucus or he's going to be a speaker of the whole House, work with Democrats, go back and negotiate with the President. You know, when the Speaker says there was a perception that taxes were being raised, no, the reality is, under his proposal, some taxes were going to be raised, and he has within his caucus a group that has really radicalized the Republican Party and his caucus who will not vote for any increase in taxes no matter what even though we need that increase along with spending cuts that's their problem they have a radical group within their ranks as Steve Lacherette La 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 said it's a group I guess that would rather be martyrs to the extremists than to govern I think In the fact, Speaker you know now needs play, to govern. You, you refer to Congressman LaTourette's uh, remarks. I'd like to play it because some of our audience members have not seen it. He's a Republican, and here's how he assessed what happened. Let's play it. Was there any pleas by any other members to, to, to encourage them to go along with this vote? No. I mean, we've been doing that for two years with these people, and and all, all they they become martyrs. I mean, you know, they become martyrs in the eyes of these these extreme groups. So, Congressman Levin, this is what happened with the grand bargain, this huge agreement that uh, had been reached apparently with Speaker Boehner and the president last year, and then Boehner walked away again. Going back to the timeline here, members of Congress at home are heading home. What happens next? What has to happen is, as I said, the speaker has to act like the speaker, not simply a leader of a party that is split, that has become radicalized, that has a group in that will not agree to anything that has taxes. It has to have only spending cuts. We've got to have a balanced approach, and essentially he has a group that wants a totally unbalanced approach. But during his so news conference to today, to he, he had an opportunity to give a clearer vision of his next move today in this news conference. Instead, he kind of explained what went wrong with his own caucus, very vaguely, I should point out. Um, but again, not giving a clear, uh, I guess, um, plan, if it's B.C. or whatever, on how he plans to negotiate with Democrats and the president. No, I think he has to be like all leaders must be, and that is to face the music. The music is he has great disharmony in his ranks. He has some who do not want to move ahead. He has to now again sit down with the president, who has been more than forthcoming, and decide it has to be done on a bipartisan basis. That's the only way that we can proceed. And so I, th I was disappointed. The speaker did not step up to the plate this morning. He has to do that or we're going to go over the cliff. 
he's going to lead us over the cliff instead of helping lead us towards a solution. And going over the cliff would be a bad move for the economy. We have two million unemployed people in this country whose benefits would be immediately cut off. We have physician reimbursements that would be cut 25 percent, hurting seniors. We have an AMT if it isn't uh, patched. Right. We're going to have millions right. of people who aren't going to get their refunds. Senator Mitch McConnell just gave a statement uh, a short time ago. He says it's the president's job to find a solution to pass uh, the Congress. He's the only one who can do it. This isn't a job of Boehner's problems to solve. He's bent over backwards. That's not, look, that's a passing of the buck. That isn't going to work. People have to sit down, but not with their hands tied. And Speaker Boehner, the problem with his caucus is they say, talk, but we're going to tie your hands. And that is not going to result in, le in, in, in a decent result. There's been this radicalization of the Republican Party. We saw it in the primary, and it culminated yesterday. The Speaker tried to appease them by saying a tax cut isn't a tax cut. Mm -hmm. He also brought up Plan C that would have hurt children, that would have hurt seniors, that would have hurt nutrition programs as an effort to appease a radical right. He has to essentially cut his ties from them in terms of negotiations and negotiate with the President of the United States, who is more than forthcoming, create a bipartisan solution, bring it up on a bipartisan basis in the House okay. and the Senate. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me bring thank it